Okay. So, so um, I hope you're enjoying the today's presentation. So now it's time to wake up and to work a little bit. So, <laughs> so we, we are now doing a, a, a medicine session. So uh, obviously you, you will need a, a computer for this one. Um, I will share in the chat the link to this uh, presentation. Yeah. And for those who are not in, uh, in the Zoom meeting, yeah, there is this uh, short link that can uh, allow you to, 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 to get there. So the presentation will uh, stay online. Um, you will, uh, it, it will uh, describe step-by-step step, uh, the end zone. So you can come back later and uh, see, uh, see something. If, if you miss, ex miss something, you can uh, go back to this. Um, is that okay for everyone? No complaining? Okay. So first, uh, for, for this hands on, you will need a computer and internet connection. And you have to pick uh, a username in this shape. Yeah. So this, is this for everybody or only? Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea is you pick uh, one account. Even and... we have an account. Here. Oh, yeah, you can use it. Uh, it will be uh, so, so it will be easier because yes. there is some uh, uh, some path in shared uh, folders that are linked to the group and so on. And maybe it will be easier. So you you have yeah on the left you have the icon and uh, and yeah this is the password to use to uh, connect to uh, to BSC uh, HPC Center. Uh, you have to replace the uh, X by the uh, free uh, final digit of your Z account. But uh, then then we will have to the name of the machine. I will, uh, we will uh, do it later. You can almost do. Sorry. Uh, send the link again. Send to the uh, Zoom meeting. Yeah. Disappear. And for people in the room, there's this one. If you want. I asked it. <laughs> Is that okay? Okay. So, yeah, you have uh, the uh, the command line that uh, will allow you to connect to uh, to the uh, ESC HPC. Um, there is a trick for for those of you that already have uh, some. Uh, uh, some SSH keys. You may have to to specify those options to uh, to force the password authentication. At least for me, it was necessary. So I can do it. So the best is to copy paste. So I was LCT. Oh. 
I think so. Yep. Password. Zero zero one. Yeah, yeah. That works. <laughs> you have, yeah. It works. Okay. And uh, not this one, this one. too many slides. So yeah, we need to create some uh, some directories that will be used uh, uh, later on this hands on. So as you are not, it's a good time to do it. <laughs> <laughs> if someone uh, issues to connect to uh, to the SSH, uh, just let us know. So the those accounts will uh, stay available for the day. I think so. So yes, if you yes. want to come back later and today to 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 redo it, it will be possible. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. I got an error. Um, yeah, I will. Uh, are you in the room or remote? No, no, no. remote? No, the, yeah, the, I, I know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The thing is, yeah, you should not write the password, but instead, I don't remember. You should, you should keep password. Uh, in fact, no, it's no, the, no, the word password. <laughs> You should, uh, okay, thank you. Good catch. <laughs> and I SSH directly without this option. Yeah. It, it is because you are a user and not. Really, right? Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. I, I, I had to add it. So if it works without this, uh, just, uh, just first try without, and if you have an issue. Uh, maybe the directory already exists for you. Um, this this one. I, I don't remember if they are already created or not. No, well, the GPFS project CT01 should exist. The other is ah, okay. No, I I think um, uh, I. Uh, maybe or maybe it's directly you, you use the, uh, one of the testing. One of the tests. <laughs> Okay, 
Yeah, I already have some stuff there. Yeah. Is that on the first uh, demo? Yeah. So is this working for someone? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, for us. Okay, so we can continue. But we won't wait for the other Yeah, yeah. If if you if you want to 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 go a bit faster, you can just uh, do it at your own speed, no problem. And if needed, I will uh, explain more so stuff. So yeah. Maybe. Indeed, the, the next step um, is to download the uh, HPC workflow as a service CLI, uh, which is directly available on, on GitHub. You have uh, two different ways to do it. Uh, the first way is to download a, a binary file. So we generated uh, binaries for different uh, operating system and architectures. So you should pick yours. Um, there was a trick for, uh, for Mac OS uh, users. Um, yeah, you have to uh, change your security settings to allow uh, the execution of uh, downloaded uh, yeah, yeah. binaries and so on. But which one should I choose? Uh, the Darwin one for Mac OS. The first one. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's Golang fast compiling. So in the Golang world, uh, uh, it's all in the uh, stick <laughs> But the, the Darwin one, no? yeah. yeah, yeah, the Darwin one for my okay. There is also a, an alternative method. Uh, you can use uh, also a Docker uh, container to do this. We generate a Docker container. Um, and uh, you can run this, this, sorry, this command. But this in our system, not in Nord Yeah, yeah, in your system. Yeah, but if you don't tell people, we'll run this in Nord No, we, there is no. We will see that there is no Docker in uh, Nord yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway, you can't you can't use uh, the CLI on uh, Nord Street because uh, you can go uh, to the right side and to reach uh, the uh, the different APIs we we expose on the on the internet. Mm -hmm. So this uh, have to be done on your on computer or on the cloud. Uh, this is something I use uh, sometimes. Yeah, if you want. For Docker, the trick is to uh, to allocate a, a TTY if you want to have a, uh, a beautiful uh, rendering of uh, uh, the CLI. Otherwise, you just plain text <laughs> with no color and so on. Is that okay? Unable to 
Okay. Then the first thing to do um, is to generate uh, an SSH keeper. Um, this is uh, what we will use uh, to uh, to interact with uh, the uh, BSC uh, HPC center um, when using the, uh, the the stack. So um, you have here the um, the command line to. Uh, uh, to use to generate this. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, this is because we we tell that we should uh, print the end command. Mm -hmm. No. Ah. It's what we expected. <laughs> so no, the, the point is, um, in this presentation, we will use this form for the different command. But if you are using the uh, Docker, you should replace this by all of this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I will be sending this command every time to, to the doctor. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yeah, for the authentication, you have to use the same credential than uh, the ones that are on the switch it so what this command does is um, the uh, workflow as a service API will create uh, a keeper so it will be uh, both uh, a private and a public key and uh, they are both stored into a vault by the API and then it returns uh, only the SSH public key. So you have to copy uh, this part. And you have also, uh, you have to copy this. And you have also the uh, SSH key ID um, that will be used to identify uh, from the point of view of uh, uh, or, uh, or stack um, the key into Vault. So you have to have uh, both of this of uh, those components. And the, the, the thing is, uh, you can generate uh, uh, you can generate uh, how many uh, keeper you want, but you can't retrieve uh, um, a generated keeper. So you have really to to take care of uh, of uh, copying uh, those uh, those things now. So for, for the public key, the idea is to store it uh, within your SSH authorized keys uh, on BSC. Yeah, you need to. You will need to. I will run this this command and show you how to do it. Okay. So. <clears throat> Um, why is so long? Oh no, I'm not. Uh, so NCT. Passwords, passwords, passwords. I, I, I think I have it. Yeah. Um, that's not it. Okay. 
OK. So the idea is to copy this. <laughs> Great. <laughs> to log into part three. To go into SSH. Oh, come on. Yeah. And to address. Okay. So we move on. Okay. So now we will try to create, configure, and deploy a workflow. Um, so in this end on, uh, the goal is really not to uh, to show how to develop a Tosca component and um, even how to uh, develop a Tosca application. Um, so for, for today, we will really focus uh, in the time we have uh, on how to use the stack. Uh, but uh, last year uh, for this project, we did uh, a two hours uh, tutorial on Tosca and uh, this is uh, still uh, available on, uh, on GitHub. So if you are interested, you can uh, have a look to, to this. Okay. So now you can go to this URL uh, to uh, to go into uh, Alien for Cloud. And you can just use the same uh, credentials to log in. So, um, yeah, same as in not three. Yeah, same, same, uh, same. Authentications uh, uh, yeah. So uh, if you remember the presentation uh, we did earlier, yeah, we take the, uh, uh, the point of view of the workflow developer. So we will interact with uh, Alien for Cloud. Uh, within Alien for Cloud, yeah, the, um, the developer can contribute uh, some Tosca components by uh, drag and drop with it, uh, some, uh, some uh, Tosca archives. You can also use uh, Git to import uh, uh, your Tosca components directly. You can browse the component you have access to. And uh, um, so if you remember, components are generic uh, Tosca components. And we can um, assemble them into an application uh, that is, in fact, a template that could be used to, uh, to create new applications. So we created uh, a template for the minimal workflow. Um, with the different parts we, we already talked about, so the image creation, the, DLS uh, image transfer, the staging uh, of the data, pipeline execution, and stacker. So now we will uh, create a new application. So let's go to application. So yeah, you see only yours uh, when, when you have created applications. 
Uh, so if you click on new application, uh, you can give your application a name. So the, the tricky part is um, application name should be unique. So in this, you know, <laughs> it's a limitation of, of uh, an interpreter. So, um, you can do something like uh, adding your uh, username or something at the beginning in this case. Yeah, oh, so it's okay. <laughs> you want something more national? <laughs> okay, so the tricky part here is you have to uh, select a topology template and not st uh, start from scratch uh, for your application. So you can select the minimal workflow. This is all explained in the in this uh, in the slide. So can go to create. So uh, in Alien for Cloud, there is uh, a lot of things you can do, but uh, you can. Uh, one of them is that you can define the different environment for your application with uh, different parameters. Uh, so for, for, for now, we will uh, use the, the default one, so environment, and you have to click on this. Again, you have a screenshot in this document. Mm -hmm. Went to or... Yeah, I, I will do it again. <laughs> okay, applications. You have your application. You. This is the main uh, screen for applications, and yeah, you can work with uh, the defined environment. So there is only one in this case. So you can click on it. Everywhere on the line will will do the trick. And now we will click on the prepare next deployment for this version. Yeah, you have to specify a location. So uh, for this, it's just open site. It doesn't really matter uh, for, for today. And then you see that um, there is some uh, something missing in the inputs. So, um, as I told you, we have designed uh, a topology template with uh, uh, where we are specializing uh, the Tosca component by, um, in this way, we, we have some, uh, uh, for example, yeah, an example is based on, for, for the PyCom jobs. But I don't know yeah. how we went from the input to this. Input. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too, too, too fast. I know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah you have. Uh, yeah, yeah. You have, you have um, a kind of uh, yeah, stream of things to do to, to deploy. So, first, you have to select a version, then you can uh, create a topology. Okay. So, in this one, uh, so you can see the topology, but you can also edit it. There is an edit button. And uh, for example, for the PyCom uh, job, what we did is that we specialized uh, this generic Python uh, PyCom job by uh, specifying some uh, some stuff. For example, the uh, um, the uh, application we will use. And so on. So this is already done in the topology template because it's uh, related to uh, the minimal workflow. But still, there is um, some uh, inputs uh, that are uh, related to uh, can be related to uh, the developer. For example, uh, you will need the uh, Volt ID uh, that you uh, created. Uh, when we when we created the uh, the SSH key, this is an input that we cannot uh, guess when we design the topology template. 
Um, and there is also uh, some uh, some uh, inputs that are related to uh, the environment we deploy on. For example, um, yeah, yeah, we have um, the URL of uh, the target host uh, we will uh, use to um, to run the PyConf execution and the target host that will be used in the DLS to transfer data and. Um, we we have different uh, environment. We have um, one environment on on the BSC and another one on on Ulysses. So those components, those uh, inputs, uh, may change uh, based on the environment. So yeah, you should. Oh no, I don't want to discover. Okay. okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah, so the thing is, you can edit the topology, but uh, be sure to not change it because <laughs> something weird can happen. Um, and yeah, you have uh, the different uh, uh, value you can use for, for those parameters. So the user ID is the one, uh, it's always the same. Uh, because, yeah, the thing is, uh, we, we are uh, the workflow developer, so we will use work credential. Uh, to transfer the generated image into uh, the, uh, the HPC center. Um, the Volt ID is uh, this part. Oh. Is this that you should copy? And for the container image transfer directory, it's where the um, the generated container image will be stored. Uh, the trick is, um, yeah, you are the developer, so uh, the idea is to put it in a shared directory where uh, end user can uh, be able to read it. So um, what we suggest is to use uh, this, uh, this, 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 uh, this kind of uh path because it's uh, a shared uh, a shared directory uh, with the dsc uh, infrastructure so uh the important thing is that the directory should exist before deployment uh the mid uh, input parameter is, um, in fact, uh, the metadata ID within the data catalog. Yeah, and this is um, what uh, DLS use uh, to know how to uh, and where to upload the results of the computation. And if you click on, uh, yeah, so this one is uh, dependent of. Uh, the uh, data catalog instance. So in this case, uh, you should uh, use this one. But previously, uh, Maria was showing how to get this information. Yeah, exactly. The data catalog. Yeah. Let me go. Who don't know? I don't know the data catalog. These ideas where you uh, specify where you are going to uh, upload like the, the, yeah. the register but okay. yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Storage target, so you have this. Yeah, should be the same. Otherwise, we have an issue. <laughs> and yeah, you have, I think, uh, the different properties that are used to to upload the results. I think so. Is that right? It's correct. Uh, well, I think because it starts with the same number, so yeah, yeah. the same number. No, no, I, I think so. I think it's the same one, but uh, 
I was asking to just say it's I understand it correctly. It's a minimal work. It's the same, it's the same. Yeah. Okay. So I will do it myself. And yeah. No, no, please. No, 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 please. No, 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 no. So we can see what you I have a question what, what we do with the two options. No, yeah. Uh, no. And this one is to um, is an option to register um, the uploaded result uh, within the data catalog, as you just show for the uh, and is it on Docker. Is it or is it on Visual Share? Probably? It's always in Visual Share, but it's not no. registering the data. So we should. Yeah, you should. <laughs> and the debug. <laughs> what do we do with the debug? We don't uh, you can. Um, the thing is, uh, with the debug logs, uh, sometimes you see some passwords. No <laughs> debug. <laughs> <laughs> but no, not nothing very critical. Now, the, the thing you you will see is um, mostly the Volt ID and uh, things like that. We uh, we will not always want to to. To have in the work so once it, this is done we can move to the review and deploy uh, tab i think it's yeah and you can when click on deploy to deploy your application. So, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> so here you can see um, the progress of the workflow. So we are submitting uh, an image creation for uh, for this workflow. Um, I, 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 it's the first time we we do this with. Uh, How you uh, see our, this? Sorry. Uh, uh, you can yeah. There is different way to do to yes, yes, yes. yeah. You can just click on this, or you can go into oh. workflow, and it will show the the different workflows. You also have access to the logs, and you can uh, you can see this. So, so, submit is okay, and now we are creating the image. Uh, if everything goes well, uh, this part should not take uh, so long because the image is already created. So we just retrieve it uh, from uh, uh, the registry and uh, expose it. There is an issue, isn't it? No, 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 it's just uh, to check the capacity. So the idea here is, oh, I have an error. So 
So I'm facing an error here, and um, I don't have much information because I did not tick the uh, debug uh, <laughs> option. Um, <clears throat> So the, the idea here is um, I, maybe there was a, an issue with uh, the communication with uh, the image creation. So the idea here is that we submit a, a, an image creation and then <clears throat> York will uh, regularly ask uh, to, uh, to this service if the creation is okay and, uh, and done. Yeah. Oh. Um, so we have uh, an IFLOS champion here. I don't know who it is, but uh, congrats to him. Um, and then, uh, yeah. Maybe. Alex. Mm -hmm. You are. You are a champion. Yeah. Service is running, but I think the. Maybe there are too many connections. Yeah. yeah, I see that there now it's, it, it's progressing in other tasks. In other tasks. Yeah. So maybe we can retry yeah. once the people stop you. But uh, after this level, it continued and at the end it's saying image created uh okay. yeah maybe we'll, uh, so i don't think... status finishes so it's kind of that it continues yeah i think we we are not able to uh, to contact the uh, image creation service so uh, mm -hmm. uh, we cannot say if uh, it's okay or not and we will retire uh, but I, I don't know if uh, the tasks are paid in the uh, image creation service or they are just. Uh, no, the, uh, the thing is that there are some time, time that I don't know if there is because they don't or something is not. But there are others that are responding very fast. Maybe just. Yeah. So let's just check it with yours now and see. So we have a second champion here. Oh, what? So on my side, uh, after some retries, uh, we finally uh, 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 finally uh, get the uh, image creation. Uh, yeah. And now we are transferring uh, the container uh, to uh, 
to the BSC infrastructure. No implementation of no PLS tax image transfer was detected. Maybe just uh, wait a little bit and try again. Uh, this one, uh, I think you. <laughs> and then we can do it. It's not fair. So, probably what's wrong with this case is that uh, there is a parameter that is not uh, correct. Uh, the thing is, uh, yeah. Yeah, you can do that again. Uh, when you're uh, allowed to do it, you can do it. 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 You can So, so the, Okay. So it's still transferring for me. Uh, this part can be long because uh, we we have to actually perform the transfer. Okay. Here it is. Okay. Uh, 
Um, should we continue because we are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so um, I will do this. Uh, and maybe I can do what I can do is use another account where we already have something deployed. I'm an admin. So as an admin, I can see all of yours. Uh, and uh, can I see one of mine? I think this one, yeah, this one is fine. Um, so now once it's deployed, uh, what we can do as a developer uh, is to test our, our workflow to see if it works properly. So uh, to do, we can do this uh, directly within Ident for Cloud to not have to to use another tool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, but uh, <laughs> so um, it's a, it's another um, uh, things will be a little bit different from what you have uh, on your uh, on your uh, your application. So. Uh, you you really have to um, <clears throat> to follow the instruction from the PowerPoint, but I, I want just to illustrate uh, what's uh, what's going on. So um, to do it in live. So from here you can select um, the execution workflow. Sorry, <clears throat> and <clears throat> yeah, you can uh, specify some uh, inputs that are specific to uh, this workflow execution. So uh, typically when we have different users, they will have different uh, uh, Volt ID, they will, they will have different user ID. Um, sometimes, I don't know, they may want to uh, use uh, different uh, uh, inputs, uh, data inputs. <clears throat> and um, they clearly want to, to use different paths to store their uh, um, the inputs and results. Um, so all of this uh, can be specified uh, just before running uh, a workflow. Um, so as a developer, you can uh, use Alien for Cloud for, to do that. So you can specify all, all of this and then click on the uh, launch button. So again, um, um, <clears throat> you have here everything you you, sh you have to know. Um, <clears throat> so um, yeah, user ID, Volt ID, you can use the same uh, as a developer. There was a yeah. question regarding yeah. the Volt ID. Sorry? Somebody in the chat was asking about the Volt ID. Can you remind me what is the form ID? Um, sorry. So the Volt ID um, is the identifier we, we use uh, when we, we get, in fact, when we generated uh, our SSH key pair. So this is uh, this one for me. And um, this is as um, the key, in fact, that um, uh, York and the DLS used to retrieve the public key into Vault. So we use this, uh, uh, this uh, randomly generated unique uh, identifier to, uh, to retrieve uh, um, the key within Vault. It adds, uh, uh, less, it's an additional layer of security because this is something that is not uh, guessable. So um, yeah, it's the only way to retrieve the, uh, um, the public key. Uh, the pivot key. Okay. Too many of them. Um, so the yeah the uh, the object ID is the uh, uh, the ID of the input data into the data catalog. Uh, so we, for this, uh, I, I don't know if I, I, I already told it, but uh, what we execute is um, uh, a simple uh, word count uh, uh, application. So uh, as an entry, we have uh, uh, a plain text file with uh, 
yeah, something. And um, we use it to to uh, to validate the uh, the work, the minimal workflow. <clears throat> so typically, this ID will be used by the DLS to uh, to retrieve the uh, the data. Um, in the target path, um, oh, so there is a source and target path. There, um, maybe a bit uh, misnamed, but uh, it's uh, for the end user. It may be not uh, that uh, uh, understandable, but um, the, the idea is uh, the target path is where we will uh, put the input data, and the source path is where the result are store and are retrieved. Uh, by the uh, DLS. This is something typically as, uh, as a workflow developer, uh, it's something I can change to, uh, to use the urban names. <clears throat> and num nodes is uh, the number of compute nodes that will be used in the HPC uh, to run the pi function. So generally we use two, but I don't know it's Okay. 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 I, I'm sorry, but we are late, so I, I, I will move on. Um, so we can click on lunch. So next is the, the next thing to do is to, um, when we uh, developed our, um, uh, our workflow, we have tested it, we are happy with this. Uh, the idea is now to, uh, to expose it uh, to the HPC workflow as a service API. So to do that, you have to go back to, uh, the uh, main page of the application. So you should click on uh, uh, the name of your application on the uh, yeah on the top left corner. So it should be something like this. And what we will do is that we will add some text to our application. And this is the way we we interact with between the uh, workflow as a service API and uh, Alien for Cloud to uh, to expose the different uh, the different uh, uh, the different workflows. So the first thing to do um, is to add um, a, a tag that is named HPC was uh, dash workflows. So in this um, in this uh, tag, you can uh, have a, a, comma, a comma separated list of uh, workflows that are defined in your application and you want to expose. So you can have one application with several workflows that can be triggered by the, by the end user. So in your, case, in your case, we should uh, use the exec job workflow name. And um, we have, we have uh, for now, um, a very basic uh, multi-tenancy support. <laughs> and um, using uh, the um, HPC was authorized users, you can specify uh, a comma-separated comma list of users um, who can uh, trigger, uh, see and trigger the, uh, the workflow. Uh, Later, we will maybe have some improvement on, on, on this, but uh, the idea is, um, yeah, if you can put your username here, uh, you, won't, uh, you won't see uh, the workflow for other people, so it can, otherwise it would be a bit messy, I think. Uh, so, because if we do not specify uh, anything here, or if the tag does not exist, uh, this workflow will be exposed to uh, everyone. Okay. So now we will switch 
uh, to the end user world. So um, the idea now is to interact uh, with the uh, HPC workflow as a service API using the CLI. So uh, for uh, uh, end users, uh, the first thing to do is uh, normally to, to generate a, a, a SSH keeper. You, you already done that. Um, so yeah, I can do it again or not. It's not a problem. Okay. And then you have um, this command that could be used to, um, to list uh, the different workflows uh, available on, uh, for your user. And if I do that, maybe. I'm not sure mine is already deployed. So um, you can use workflows. You can, we, we have some uh, shortcuts. Uh, yeah, I have a workflow. Uh, no, in fact, it's a workflow that is exposed to, to, to everybody, but okay. So, um, so yeah, we, you have this long name that is used to uh, uniquely identify the workflow. Uh, so basically it's composed of uh, the application name, uh, the environment that is uh, again a unique in, uh, UUID uh, in uh, Alien for Cloud and the workflow name. So with all of that, uh, you have the uh, workflow ID and it will allow to, uh, uh, the thing is we can have for, for the same application, we can have different environments and uh, within each environment we can have different workflows so we have to uh, to manage this and we end up by having this uh, very long uh, identifier um, okay so then uh, you can trigger an execution uh, on a given workflow. So you have many parameters here. Um, so what is important is we're interacting with workflows. We want to trigger a new workflow. Uh, you have the this flag, uh, the F flag, which um, in, in fact, with the, um, the CLI will interact with the REST API in an asynchronous mode. So we will trigger a workflow, get an execution ID, and uh, you can use the, uh, the CLI to retrieve uh, the status of uh, the, uh, the execution. With the dash F uh, flag, you will trigger the workflow and in the same command, you will be able to, uh, to follow the execution uh, and see the status uh, that is uh, updated uh, uh, within the CRI. Uh, then you have the dash i uh, parameters. Uh, those flags are, are used to uh, provide the same, um, yeah, the same uh, input parameters for the workflows that uh, the one we specified. Uh, we specified here. Yeah. Yeah. Same as both ones. So if you don't specify the, the follow uh, um, flag, you will have to uh, get the execution ID uh, that is written by uh, the CLI and uh, use uh, this, uh, this command to, to get the status. So I don't know if now I have my uh, no workflows. <coughs> With your account, 
uh, I, I don't think I have uh, any workload because uh, I have the one on the uh, but I don't think it's a good idea. So. Um, maybe I can eject the, uh, the, the credential for from uh, zero zero three. Uh, it's open source. I don't remember who is uh, uh, this this one. Can I use uh, this account to uh, to show the rest of the demo? Mm. Zero zero three. There is somebody online. Oh, or someone else. But, but I don't yes. Know. I, uh, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So. Yeah. Ah, it's running. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but uh, let's see. Um, uh, no, I, I can't guess the execution. I, um, in fact, what we uh, also. But, but when I click the same corner, I could see Jacob of the one. Yeah, it's because there is maybe not yet the tags that limit to uh, the authorization. Yes, I didn't put the tag. Yeah. Now that I put it, yeah, okay. and so we don't see it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what, what we can do is uh, you you can uh, you can trigger uh, execution in parallel. So we we can just do this. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, I can see it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I see it now. Okay. Yeah. Currently, it's uh, it's only uh, for the uh, the list uh, when we list the available workflow. Uh, in fact, if I add the um, the workflow idea, I will be able to trigger it uh, anyway. Wow. Even if you don't worry, we have a lot of things to do to improve the uh, uh, this part uh, in the uh, workflow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Ah, um, the thing is, I won't have the full tidy buff. Right. But if you use your entity, you know, this will use the AMAX, but in the, with your account. Yeah, but my workflow is not deployed. But, so I can't. Uh, uh, yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah, I can use. I, oh, in fact, yeah, you are, you are right. I can. Yeah. We will do something. Strange, but uh, <laughs> uh, 
Okay, and uh, now. No, I will use yours to trigger the work. Uh, okay. So, uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm using your your workflow, and so uh, yeah, what we can see is uh, that we successfully uh, submitted uh, treated, well, yeah, submitted the um, uh, the request to to execute this workflow. So we get uh, an execution ID. And then we use this execution ID to uh, regularly check uh, the status of uh, this uh, um, this workflow. So for, for now, there is not much uh, that we can see uh, in the API except uh, for the status. But we can uh, yeah plan to to add more more information later. Uh, at least the logs. And maybe we, we talk about uh, some uh, monitoring stuff uh, <laughs> yesterday. So maybe uh, you can run this one with your uh, yeah yeah. It, it, it was the trick for now. The uh, authorized user is only uh, used uh, when listing uh, workflows, but uh, I can trigger them. Something that we can have later. This this part was added uh, just uh, last week to uh, to have something that is more usable for for this sensor. Uh, otherwise, we will have see all of this uh, The thing is. Uh, and make some tests so I can, oh yeah we can log on so yeah yeah uh, Maybe the that color is just a good one. Maybe put something wrong. Yeah, it's uh, it's finished now, so I'm not seeing too no. loud. But um, if I, I think, uh, mm. that's yeah, we'll right. <laughs> so yeah, we have the Icon jobs executed by Sram. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Yep. Uh, I have a question. 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 I
So when you list uh, the available workflow, you have this workflow ID here. And this is the one you should use to trigger uh, an execution of this workflow. So it should have run once already. No, 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 it should not have run. It should have been deployed. Yes, exactly. Uh, and exposed. Uh, <laughs> and exposed the machine. Yeah. Okay. So my just failed three times. So I don't have the idea. Uh, okay. There is probably something that is not trying to input or something like that. But yeah, we're still the body. Okay, you, so after you, you deploy, then you see the workflow idea. That's what we're going to do. If you are our Afro expansion, you see the workflow. No, it's not a workflow. 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 It could be the, but it was in the submission part or in the running part? No, it's still in the running. Don't run. This is probably the most important. Yeah, I think it's in I tried to run Jacob one, they started, but then something failed. But I mean, I succeeded to run it. Yeah, but the strange thing is that you changed also the user ID in my. Ah, okay. application. Oh, sorry. And I thought I think that maybe this can be. No, in fact, it's uh, something we can use. We can have different users within the same. The uh, same. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And that's why we we uh, put uh, everything like uh, input gears and with uh, gears uh, as an input of the workflow execution. Ah, uh, yes. So in this way, we can use the same workflow. For different users. This is typically what we want to, to do. <laughs> yes, okay. I have to rerun it because it's a volt ID and it works. Ah, okay. But right now it's working. Okay, you see, running. So it's changing, it's unbelievable. I can only go to the portion because you change this, this is your thing. Execution that was uh, successful, and I don't say this. But she, she did it, but it's not mine. Mm. No, but this one should be okay. I, I was trying this one. Ah, okay, and this was the one that you tried, but it's not mine. No, this is, I did this my one one. Yeah. Uh, I did my user. To trigger your workflow. Ah, my workflow? Yeah. Ah. Right. <laughs> no, but I don't see. No, it was not oh. this was No, it was, it was not mine. It was another one. The idea was from somebody who was online. Ah, okay. But it's another person. Because yours, it's a secret. It's the only one that I see that you so essentially it's quite uh, in fact this is uh, the one i used it's uh, for 
008. 008, no, no. Oh, no, it's not. 08 is Alex. Okay. <laughs> so if, if you manage to to have all of this working, you are a new flow ninja. <laughs> well, that, that was all for our there side. Was, uh, wait a second. Uh, there were some questions. I don't know if you try to answer. Yes. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay, I got it. There was one question. What is the workflow ID for periodic execution? So the workflow ID is the one you, you have when you list uh, the different workflows. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, okay. It's later he said that the, okay, okay, perfect. Yeah. But sometimes it's too poor answering anyway because. <laughs> okay, if you want to, to close the session. Well, the, so that was all from our side. So. Thank you very much for the. Uh, you see that there was one external user that also yes, was yeah. able to run it. Yeah. Yeah, the issues so that we had is that it was so the first time that we ran with uh, this amount of I users mean, at the same no, time. With uh, so this is just to that we close the the part of the tutorial. So and so thank you very much for all the people who attend. Also for the externals to the construction, <laughs> and uh, well, we will uh, send you the, the slides, and also we plan to to provide uh, to to publish the, the videos, maybe the part of the Hanson we will try to repeat uh, in, with a clean environment and all the things working, uh, and and that's that's all.